Hello everyone, I'm Carbon Gizmat, and welcome to Mechanics Dismantled Episode 6. Today, we're talking about damage formulae, and how damage inflicted is calculated in games. Just a quick sort of disclaimer before I start. In this video, I'll often reference attack and defense. This is because they're generally the two stats that games use in their damage formulae. They aren't always called attack and defense, but the general idea of one value measuring an attack's offensive power and the other measuring the target's defensive power is pretty unanimous, which is why I'll be using them a lot. We'll start by talking about damage formulae in board games and tabletop games. These are generally rather uncomplicated since all the in-game calculations have to be handled by humans. If you have to crack out a calculator every single time you perform an attack, it slows down the pace of the game to a crawl, and unless you particularly love doing heavy maths, that can make the game incredibly boring. For these kinds of games, damage numbers are usually constant. They're just a flat number, or determined by roll of a dice. The most complex they'll ever get is a few dice rolls plus a modifier, since these can be done by a human player within just a couple of seconds. This keeps the game nice and quick and interesting. Right, now here's where we get into the meat of the topic. Computers are, generally, way better at doing maths than humans are. This means that the damage formulae of computer games are not limited in terms of complexity. You can get away with some really wacky and complex things which would take humans far too long to be at all practical, but are more fine-tuned to work with your game. I'll start off talking about what makes a good damage formulae, and then I'll go through a few of the basic archetypes and give you a taster of how different games do it. So, what does make a good damage formula? Well, the only golden rule is that it should make sense within the context of your game. If all the players in your game have somewhere between 100 and 200 health, and your damage formula results in, like, 500 damage every attack, then there's not much point in having a damage formula in the first place, since every attack is pretty much going to be a one-hit kill. There's nothing wrong with having a game where every attack is a one-hit kill, but it makes having attack, defense, and health in the first place sort of redundant. For such a game, you probably want to develop a damage formula which produces damages in the 0 to 200 band, so hit points and damage actually mean something. Now, let's take a look at some examples and how games actually do it. One of the most popular damage formulae is attack minus defense. This is good because it's super simple and super easy for humans to comprehend, and someone can look at a character with 50 attack and a character with 35 defense and instantly say, aha, that attack will deal 15 damage. Uh, notable games that use this formula include Fire Emblem Heroes and Other Side. The problem with this formula is that if the target's defense value is greater than or equal to the attacker's attack value, the attack will always deal zero damage. Uh, you can't even damage your target with constant attrition, and while you may want this to be a feature of your game, it highly incentivizes maxing out your defense and making yourself invincible to lower level attacks. Hence, a lot of MMORPGs tend to not use this formula, because if your defense is so much higher than your fellow players of an equivalent level, you'll just be borderline undefeatable. Right, let's move on. Another kind of damage formula involves the attack value being divided by the defense value in some way or another, the simplest example being damage equals attack divided by defense. I've made a little graph to show you how the damage of an attack decreases as the target's defense increases, assuming a constant attack value. So, when the target has a defense of 1, the attack does minimum damage. As the defense increases, the resultant damage gets smaller and smaller, but never reaches 0, since you can't divide one number by any other number to get 0. These kinds of formulae tend to be used much more for MMORPGs, since even low-level players can harm higher-level players, just not very much. Pokemon is a good example of a game which uses an attack divided by defense damage formula. Okay, it's not as simple as my first example, but the key part is there. Attack divided by defense. See, just there. All right, next I just quickly want to look at exponential damage formulae. This is the most mathematically difficult kind of formula, so I'll just go over it very quickly. The basic idea is that you divide the attack value by a certain number raised to the power of defense over attack, like this. I won't go into the deep maths, but basically it means that the damage reaches its maximum when defense is zero, and it never reaches zero entirely. It also has a much gentler curve than attack divided by defense, so becoming near invincible by maxing out defense becomes a far less viable option. Here are the graphs of, for the last two kinds of formulae side by side. Look how much gentler the curve of the second formula is, even when taken over a much wider range of defense values. The last thing I want to talk about here is uh, the inclusion of randomization in your damage formulae. Uh, 
If you want to learn more about randomization, you can go check out Mechanics Dismantled Episode 3. Brief plug over. Let's get back to the current video. XCOM is a good example of a game which heavily relies on randomization to determine damage, as each of its weapons deals damage within a certain range. So actually, no attack or defense values are needed here, it just picks a random number within the range. Some formulae, including the aforementioned Pokemon, have a random modifier alongside their standard formula. In the case of Pokemon, this essentially makes the attack deal between 85 and 100% of the damage calculated by this part of the formula. The range of possible damage formulae is basically unlimited, since there are infinite different mathematical formulae you could make. Remember, the only golden rule is that it should make sense within your game. Beyond that, go wild. There's a giant selection out there, particularly in the world of video games. Go have a look for yourself. Search up a few damage formulae from your favourite games and see if you can identify a few of the types that I've talked about. I've been Carpin Gizmat, and thanks for watching this latest episode of Mechanics Dismantled. If you enjoyed or learned something new, be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you know when I next upload a video. Bye for now.